Have you ever been in a situation where you felt absolutely over your head? <laughs> One of the first times that I can remember feeling this way uh, was when I went to visit uh, my friend named Bubba uh, at the, the ministry that he was overseeing. Uh, so I was a young youth minister, about 24, 25 years old, uh, and Bubba was working at this really, really large church uh, in the Dallas area. He was teaching me how to run different events and, and how to disciple different people. And I'll never forget, he invited me to come and to visit him at his place of business. It was so much bigger than any church that I'd ever been to. I mean, I mean, 10,000 people uh, that attended services there uh, on the weekends. And he oversaw all of the student and children's ministry there. When I walked in to his office building, I was so nervous and I could just feel my stomach churning on the inside. When I walked in, there was a desk uh, where uh, his secretary sat and uh, she had taken in information from me and said, I'm gonna contact Bubba and let him know you're here so that he can come and visit you. And I sat down on a couch kind of like this one uh, and I sat and waited, but on the inside, I just was going, oh my goodness, I feel so out of place. I was so young and had not experienced anything like that before. Well, sure enough, when Bubba came out, he greeted me and said hello, and there were people all around him in that moment who had come to meet me as well. Well, I just blurt out, hey, Bubba, how's your family doing? And then Bubba gives a response, but I was not listening to whatever his response was because I was so nervous about the moment. He begins to introduce me to all these different people. Uh, he said something about his family, but I don't really remember what it was. And when we moved on to the rest of the facility, he then takes me on about a 45 minute journey where we're looking at all the different parts of the facilities, we're meeting all the different staff that work for him and hearing about the vision that he has uh, for ministry in that area. Honestly, I just, my head was spinning and I was struggling to keep up. Well, finally, we get done with the tour and we went and sat down in what I believe to be kind of the inner sanctum of his office. When we sat down, I had brought a legal pad and a pen with me. And I looked at Bubba and said, can I ask you a few questions? And he said, yes, young man, I would love to answer your questions, but I need you to answer one for me first. I had my pad and pen out, ready? And then Bubba asked me the question that just absolutely disarmed me. He said, can you tell me one thing that I said about my family when you met me in the lobby? My heart sank. I didn't hear him. I had been so wrapped up in the moment so wrapped up in everything else that was going on that I couldn't tell him one thing that he said about his kids or his wife. My jaw hit the ground. He knew I wasn't gonna be able to answer that question. And really, I think he set me up, but it was to teach me a good lesson. He said, young man, he said, nothing will matter in these moments together. I can give you great wisdom, but if we don't fully engage with the world around us, then it doesn't matter the teaching that's put before us. That was a powerful moment for me, and I've always remembered it. There are so many people that you interact with, and now, from the lesson last week, you are going to be able to see the work that God is doing around you. But now, the call of God is that you would fully engage with the world around you, that you would not only see them, but that you would take the time to hear their story, to perceive their needs, and then you would be moved to a point of action to help your fellow man around you as well. In John chapter 13, he's on his way to the cross and literally has one final lesson he can teach the disciples in their small group before he goes to the cross to take the place of our sin. And in that moment, Jesus does the Last Supper, but the lead-in lesson is what is so powerful. That's when he leaves the point, the head point at the table, and leaves to go and wash his disciples' feet. Think about this for a minute. He is truly going to be whipped 39 times with the cat of nine tails. He's going to be convicted of crimes that he did not commit. And he's going to be discredited as a rabbi. According to tradition, when they discredited a rabbi, they would grab their beard and rip it out of their face so that when they walked around town, they would be discredited. He'll be whipped, he'll be disgraced, charged with a crime he hasn't committed. He's gonna have nine inch nails drugged through his hands and feet so that he will suffocate to death on the cross for our sin. And yet, in that moment when Jesus could be selfish, he chooses to see beyond himself and to look towards the disciples. He leaves the head place at the table and he begins to wash their feet.
Washing the feet was the lowest of the low jobs. Nobody wanted to do it. And it catches the disciples so off guard, Peter responds, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Are you going to do the job that nobody else wants to do? And then Jesus looks at Peter and says, but Peter, if I don't wash you, then you'll have no part of me. Peter then catches it and he goes, oh, then not my, just my feet, but Lord, wash my face and my head as well. Lord, wash me completely clean. Jesus' response is priceless. He says, uh, a person who's had a bath just needs their feet to be washed. I love it because Jesus goes, for the sake of this lesson, your feet will do. It's a beautiful picture of how our God sees us. In the midst of everything going on in the universe, God sees you individually and takes time to wash our feet. Jesus then assumes his position at the head of the table and he says, what I have done for you, I desire for you to do for one another. We've got to take the time to step out of our world and everything we have going on to fully engage with the people that are around us in the journeys that they're walking. And that's not just seeing them, but taking the time to listen to them and what they're going through. Not too long ago, my wife and I were up on H Street uh, in Chinatown here in DC. And we had just eaten at a place, had some delicious sweet and sour chicken, and uh, I'll never forget, we walked out of the restaurant and we had uh, a to-go container of food with us. And as we're walking out, just Autumn and I, when we walk out, there was a man living homeless that walked up to us and said, Sir, can I please have your leftovers? At that moment, we have so many in D.C. that are homeless, it can be easy just to breeze by. But I saw this man, and I could hear the desperation in his voice. There are many in D.C. that live homeless, but this was someone that the Lord had placed in our path that we were supposed to take care of. We handed him the box of food, and there was a fork on top of it that we had taken in, a plastic fork from the restaurant. We didn't steal the silverware, all right? I'll never forget, the man takes the fork, takes the food, and he began to eat it right there in front of us, not for show, but he turned and was starting to walk off. But we noticed something. Tears were pouring down both of his cheeks. He was crying silently, but tears were pouring down his cheeks as he shoveled the food into his mouth. We saw this man, not as someone living homeless, but we saw him as one of God's children who was in need. Autumn and I stopped him after that and said, Sir, are you okay? He said, it's just been a really tough stretch in my life. We stopped, we prayed for him, and then we found other ways to meet some of the other needs that he had as well. Don't you see? We serve a God who sees us, and he desires that we see the world around us but that we fully engage with them so that we can hear their stories and help them navigate the unthinkable things that they are having to navigate. We live in a society right now of earbuds. You see earbuds all around? We put the earbuds in, plug it into our phone or to our iPod or to our MP3 player or whatever, and we go around and we go throughout our lives with those earbuds in. And the idea is we are connected with the world, but we are not fully engaged with the world around us. The goal this week is that you would pray, God, give me ears to hear what you hear, that I would take those, those, those earbuds out of my ears, that I might be able to fully engage with the world around me, that I could listen to their problems and figure out what it is I could do as the hands and feet of Jesus Christ to serve them and to wash their feet. The question I have for you this week is, do you listen to people? Be honest. Do you listen to people or are you just waiting to talk and tell your story on top of whatever it is that they've told? Our heart grows as we hear other people's story. Mm -hmm.